Hey, in reality, nothing really bad happens this episode, but I still wanted to put a content warning for vibes in general, because they're weird this episode. So if at any point you feel like uncomfortable with the energy being presented in the room, feel free to take a pause and take a breath and step back and come back to this one later. It's really funny and really good and we really like it, but at the same time, the energy in the room was slightly unbearable. I mean all of this in the most lighthearted way possible. Oh, also, I introduce two new game mechanics that we may or may not move forward with in the future. They were kind of fun, but Michaela went ahead and did an amazing job in editing little bell sounds in to indicate when those mechanics were going off. It'll make more sense once we get into it. So that's all. Anyways, enjoy this very, very cool and somewhat strange episode. Bye. Exactly two hours before Vincent arrives at the Witchwood Market in the back room belonging to a business partner that Dr. Singe and her companions are set to meet. We find ourselves at the beginning of a tenuous talk. Asrim, you have had two hours to meander the Witchwood Market in preparation with the cronies of a certain snag racing champion in tow. And now, you sit across from the man of the hour. Dresden at your side. The four failed thugs behind you. Charlie, Lisa, Stephen, and Susan. Susie, I think. So, I almost had it. <laughs> <laughs> we can keep that in. Charlie, Lisa, Stephen, and Susie. Susan, <laughs> such a good regular name. Um, sorry to all the Susans out there. In this back room, this reserved space for Geronimo Johnson, <laughs> I didn't force it out, <laughs> and his pit crew goons. You can see that it's alighted by the same crystal light fixtures that light up some of the other spaces in the tents in the Witchwood Market. The room itself is full of trophies and photos from all the crowning moments you can assume. Snag racing cups that glitter in that dim colorful light. Photos of Geronimo smiling ear to ear. But he's not smiling. He's sat back wearing a dazzling leather jumpsuit half unzipped to unveil musculature pretty eyes that are a dazzling purple that match his outrageous hair a mass of hair that is thick and styled so stiffly that it sticks out right in front a large purple pompadour that just <laughs> curls upward as he takes himself very seriously from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure <laughs> <laughs> it, it nearly defies gravity and you are outnumbered entirely with several guns pointed at you currently you six, I think, which, you know, Charlie and the others are very confused as to why they also are being pointed out with guns, but you can surmise that you are outnumbered a good, if it's just you and Dresden, two to ten or so. And Geronimo speaks up and says, well, this is not how I expected my morning to go. Did you? Oh, uh, you know, honestly, Asrim says with his hands in the air, I can't say 
It is? But I feel like we might be being a little hasty, fellas. Maybe we got off on the wrong foot. I'm- I'm a snag racing enthusiast. I've- I come with no ill will. All the guns are trained on you as Charlie speaks up and says, I'm sorry, boss. He just, he wanted to talk. And he was a lot stronger than, than you thought he was. And he says, is that right? Well, why don't you, uh, take a seat then for me so we can talk. Okay. Does he look like he's gonna, like, pull something over me? I mean, this situation could probably gun you down at a moment's notice and, you know, turn this into a, a bloody fight. But for now, he's kind of composed, sipping out of a tankard as he leans back in his chair. Now, uh, listen here. I... Send a couple of my trusted compatriots out there to uh, get an apology. But now I'm feeling like maybe an apology isn't sufficient. But to hear that you want to talk to me, now that, that interests me. Yeah, yeah, so that, that has to do with the apology part. Um... Not sure what I did there. Not really sure what I did. I see. Well, why don't I illuminate you? And we talk. Okay. So, what was about to take place is a tense negotiation. Something that Azram is very good at. But I wanted to spice things up. Because otherwise, this is just going to be a conversation where you roll dice and I roll dice. And then eventually I'm like, that dice was not good enough. And you know what? Sometimes that's good. But I wanted to change things up. And I'm sure that you are wondering about the tower of blocks I have put in front of you. Viewers, if you can't see it, there is a Jenga tower that I have set up in front of Michaela for my sick and twisted little game. (laughs) Allow me to introduce the negotiation tower. In the face of Soft's amazing charisma, two two very high charisma friends of mine, I have taken a mechanic based on the game Dread, an RPG system by the Impossible Dream. Instead of resolving things with dice rolls, we are going to resolve them with Django pools. Every time you make an ask or you say something that I deem is risky, that would receive any kind of pushback, you're going to pull a block from the tower. And if that pull is successful, that statement is received without anything boiling over. Conversations are still going on. If at any point the tower falls, negotiations are over. And how people feel about you by the end of the negotiation is how people feel about you. And currently, Geronimo Johnson does not see a reason to let you out of this room alive. And it's different from, you know, the Weldon, uh, non-magic on Syrians. These people, they're strong. They're fairly strong, at least in numbers. You're still stronger than most of them one-on-one, but 10 to 2, not great. So, how do you make sure this conversation goes well? At the end of the conversation, I'm going to tally how many blocks you have pulled out. So keep those separate somewhere else. And that's going to determine how the negotiation went and the mood of this important NPC towards you. If you have three blocks by the end of the game, they feel neutral towards you. If you've got six blocks by the end of the game, they are friendly. If you have nine blocks, this person is now at your beck and call. Like, that that's how well this negotiation went. It's a little risk-taking. But how do you get that many if I'm just making you pull one out? Well... I am going to allow you to pull out blocks equal to your charisma modifier every time you pull. So you can pull up a maximum of five blocks every time you ask or make a risky statement. Your goal is to get as many blocks as possible. 
So make as many risks and asks as you want. One other system I need to explain, and also feel free to stop me if you have any questions, okay. is I did say that you were meandering the Witchwood Market for two hours, and there's a period of time that we did not cover in any episode. And that's the period of time that Azram and Dresden walked through the Witchwood Market. And you will get time to explore it afterwards, but... We are assuming that time was fully in enacting any kind of plan or preparation that Azram was trying to do. And so, I introduce flashbacks from the Blades in the Dark uh, by John Harper system. Basically, at any point during this conversation, you can call a flashback and use up one of three flashbacks. And you tell me what you did in that flashback. It could be as benign as I bought fancy wine as an offering or as crazy as I paid off one of these guards to shoot Geronimo Johnson if he talks bad against me or something or if things are going south. Something like that. Every one of them will come with a roll. That's how we'll resolve flashback. So any questions before we hop into the negotiation? No, I think I'm good. Perfect. So... To start off, Geronimo Johnson volleys at you a bit, says. Now, I had a particular reservation at a restaurant that I really enjoy. (laughs) But when I arrived at said restaurant, it said that my reservation was already fulfilled. (laughs) And they pointed towards you all. And I had to move my dinner back. And... I'm a very impatient person. At this, Dresden kind of side-eyes you and gives you a look that you can interpret as he he still got the dinner, didn't he? (laughs) And back towards it and Bravo says, what do you have to say to that? Oh. Oh dear. I didn't... I didn't... I didn't know. I I thought we had made a reservation and... I came in and I I gave them my last name, which is, which is Johnson. And I, it must've been, it's it's my first day. It was my first day in town. I'm maybe I booked a reservation for the wrong restaurant or something. That's, that's so, such a coincidence. Make a poll for me. (laughs) Um, just for the audience, how many are you planning on pulling? The second you touch Jenga rules. Oh, so 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 when you touch it you 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 commit to a pull i don't think i'm gonna have it the same as like if you touch it then you have to pull that one out because you're pulling several ones out Mm -hmm. but like when you reach for another pull like if you're like ah i'm gonna do it again then you gotta do it um i'm gonna start with i can i start with one and i just want to get a a, get a feel for the jenga get a feel for the tower oh god feel free to Feel free to stand up and do whatever you need to do. Oh, and this is this is. Did you glue this together? It's tight. It's a tight tower for some reason. It's a it fresh, a, fresh box of Jenga, untampered with. Untampered with my Irish. So much more precarious than I thought it would be. One successful pull. I will narrate. One block. The audience. One block is acquired. Adam currently has one block as Ramo Johnson sits back and. Oh, are you going for another? I'm going to go for another. You're going for another. Okay. A second pull. What a crazy... Oh, my God. What a, what a thrilling audio experience. <laughs> You're joking me. Okay, so you have two blocks, and I'm sweating, and, and our audience can't fully see it, but uh, but I'm, you're going to hear a loud crash when this thing comes down. I'm currently... I'm sweating. I'm really sweating. <laughs> Okay, uh, so the statement passes by and kind of lands in t sources. Mistaken identity, then, it was. Really? I mean, how many other people have you met with the last name Johnson? Actually, a lot. He kind of narrows his eyes. Thanks. Charlie kind of speaks up behind you boss it's kind of it's, it's kind of a common name outside of this city and he says yeah. Harley what are you saying and Charlie says 
right now I'm going by Charlie, actually, if you could respect that. And he says, oh, sorry, Charlie, then what are you... <sighs> okay, so say I believe the whole story of mistaken identity. That still doesn't change the fact that a precious reservation after a long, hard match on the snag racing course was delayed by at least another day. I mean, what can you do to make that up to me for my lost time and my uh, disappointment? Uh, I... I don't... um, did Did you guys get to sit that night and eat? It wasn't at my favorite table, but uh, he's kind of he kind of is caught off guard a bit by this. It says it, it's not about the table. I, it kind of is, but it, it, it's mm. it's more about the principle taking another man's reservation. But wasn't it a mix-up by the restaurant? Shouldn't they have they just verified the first name since it's a kind of common last name? <laughs> this is like a a very like basic coming together of knowledge right that's that's not too much of an ask but at this sentence it's like this man's eyes kind of cross he's he's, his head's kind of spinning at what you're saying this very basic thing uh so go ahead and give me a pull (laughs) oh my god what are you (laughs) the bottom smooth like butter the first goal of this talk which I probably should have talked to. Are you still going? <laughs> Two blocks in one pool. Four blocks currently. Michaela's pulled, pulled four blocks. Um, four blocks. Four blocks Would in you total. guys like to hear them? Four blocks. Around. The initial goal of this conversation. You see everything sort of click, and then there's like a hearty like, oh, ha, <laughs> ha. Ah, uh, yeah. I suppose then I should have checked with the restaurant about that beforehand before calling you out. Uh, listen, uh, I I think, and sort of that composure kind of gets lost. I, I think that maybe there was a bit of a misunderstanding and I was wrongfully accusing you of something. Sorry about that. Um... I suppose if there's no uh, problem here, then uh, I guess we're done here. So you can leave now as sort of Dresden kind of elbows you um, and kind of whispers over. It says, uh, I don't think we're done here. Oh, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Geronimo, can I can I call you that, Mr. Johnson? What would you prefer? Uh, you can call me uh, Johnny Champ. I like that. I like when people call me Champ. I bet you do. <laughs> so, Champ. <laughs> Everyone in the room is just uncomfortable. <laughs> Actually. I do you see you see I'm also a pretty important person you're not the only important Johnson walking around (laughs) and imagine you taking a nice morning walk right picture it walk with me come on close your eyes think with me close your eyes Uh, okay yeah all right okay now imagine you're taking a morning walk you're just you just woke up you're enjoying the fresh scent of the morning dew and then all of a sudden, kablam! He just kind of falls backwards a little bit. He's like, oh, oh, okay, okay, everyone, hold, hold on, hold on. Someone attacks you in the street. Uh, Wouldn't that be just like a whole damper on your whole day? And not only someone, four people attack you in the street. Four people. Wouldn't that fucking suck? Wouldn't that just ruin your whole morning? Completely derail all of your plans? Make a pull. You've unnerved him. (laughs) You've unnerved him really quickly as he kind of, like, at a loss for words. I didn't realize how stressful this episode would be for me. 
I'm that's a jenga block fifth block pulled one more to get to a a friendly do you think i should try to pull another one it's up to you it's up to you yeah fuck you guys we're in this together oh my god oh good god i'm tense i'm tense i'm so tense six blocks six blocks hitting the friendly tier as geronimus says ah all right everyone stay cool stay cool everyone we're good just caught me off guard is all he kind of takes a comb from his pocket and then kind of flicks it through the hair as he looks he says now mr from one johnson to another I can tell you that I maybe had, um, I was having some dark thoughts after I, after I had, uh, lost my reservation. <laughs> and so, this game Christopher Walken, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so, with the, with the reservation, um, <laughs> um, all I was saying was that I, I was having some dark thoughts. I was in a really dark place when... You took my reservation. That, that, honestly, I may have taken some things out on you that uh, maybe I shouldn't have. And, I, I mean, I get that. I get that. I really do. I'm a really understanding guy. You, me, me too, if you can believe, if you can believe it, yeah. And, but I, I, I can't deny, like, the inconvenience that I had this morning compared to the inconvenience of you just sitting at a different table at your restaurant they're not they're not really equivalent so the reason i've come here today is is because i think now like you owe me oh <laughs> make a pull you had a big turnaround <laughs> oh my god and this tower is looking sparse i'm sick oh god <laughs> What the the, the 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 angle I have of this <laughs> of this asymmetrical tower is a seventh pull is a success as kind of looks and says, "Now nah, listen, you're right. Maybe I acted a little hasty with not all the information in place, and and we're understanding people. I mean, you know, we we can be. I I messed up, and." You know, honestly, I'm starting to, to, in just a few words, you really kind of showed yourself to be a man of charisma. And so I'd like to talk to you about that. What, what's your ask, if, if, uh, if I may be so bold? I was wondering if you knew anything about moon dust. And takes a deep breath says now you're asking about one of the most popular commodities here in the witchwood market <sighs> tough to come by and only one source but yeah I've had my taste here and there <laughs> <laughs> this is killing you. I'm gonna keep going with it, but it's getting worse and worse. It's going worse and worse with each with each word. It's just getting worse. I keep going. I just commit to it. So, what do you want to know? I look at Dresden and I'm like, mm, what do I want to know? Oh, um, we were interested in the dust for its healing properties and looking for a supplier and getting in contact with associates of a supplier the supplier as you say uh, it's been a bit difficult he says oh yeah that's one of the hardest things to do here he goes all the way up if you know what I'm saying but the healing properties they're not in it for the party aspect of it all Really, you respect that. <laughs> I'm actually having a meeting with a uh, supplier, someone that claims that they can get moon dust on the cheap. A little later today, but um, might be a conversation that you are uh, 
Might be a conversation that uh, you may take interest in yourself. Are you saying that I can join you? Uh, well, you know, not entirely just yet. Uh, oh, but I don't know too much about you besides that you're a smooth talker and you're quite handsome. Oh, you think I'm handsome? Everyone in the room with still guns pointed to you are like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> Words came out of my mouth, and I mean what I say. <laughs> as, as from internally, <laughs> takes a big gulp. Dresden looks over and is like, "Are you really gonna go down this path?" His eyes are like wide. And he's like, "Is this the route we want to take right now?" <laughs> and as from, <laughs> he struts, he walks towards Geronimo. Oh. A little, little slowly, almost even seductively. I'm whimpering, <laughs> whimpering. <clears throat> well, champ. Who <sighs> said it? I hate that I would uh, put that into the universe. <laughs> you know, I like. I just got here. I am looking for someone to maybe introduce me and show me around the parts of the city. Tristan's eyes are wide. Go ahead and get go. Give me two more pull. Or no, one more pull. Sorry. Give me one more pull. You have, you have two until you reach the highest possible tier, but that tower is looking fucked up. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh God. Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Oh. One more block pulled out of the tower. Statement is received. <clears throat> Geronimo Johnson kind of says, oh, moving a little fast, but uh, friends of Geronimo Johnson, I mean, there's no better person to have in the city than the snag racing champion. He says, as he kind of sits back. Azram keeps walking towards him. Is he sitting? He's sitting. He's, he's sitting back in like a wide, like, I guess, like throne like chair, kind of pulled back, like head of the dining table thing. And everyone's still got their guns pointed at you, but they're just like, what is his move here? <laughs> Azrum keeps walking up. And then when he gets up to <gasps> Mr. Geronimo, do you mind if I sit? What? <laughs> <laughs> His eyes are kind of wide as you're so close to him. And Justin's like, what? <laughs> as you are choosing this thermonuclear option, Azurum, there is a sound, a voice that cuts through like a guardian angel warning you. That sounds like DeVille. It says in this strange, kind of staticky, almost distorted way. We hope you all are safe shopping. Vincent and I are on business. I will meet up with you once we're finished for our lunch together. It's quick, it's short. And in this moment, it catches you completely off guard as you are using tactics you have not had to use in a very long time. What do you do? Azram's eyes go a little wide and he takes a, a big gulp. <clears throat> Can can I respond like not for out loud? Like can I respond in my head? Yeah, yeah. This the way the spell works, you can you can try and send a response back. It's coming through like in bits and pieces, so you get like every other word or something like that. Everyone in the room's eyes are on you, all wide, still guns pointed, but now they're all kind of confused. Okay, can't wait. Remember that you're the light of my life. And <laughs> Nothing can ever come in between that. <laughs> <sighs> you feel the words drift off into the ether, and 
you pray that they reach their destination. Okay, and Azrim tries to focus back on the original conversation at hand. I... I just thought that maybe we could make this conversation just between the two of us. Uh, um, he takes out his comb and starts violently combing his hair up as he's like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> well, uh this is quite unexpected. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm really not ready, uh, to, to... Uh, you know, we just met and everything. Uh, you know, uh, go ahead. Make a pull. This is your last pull? Oh! <laughs> Geronimo begins to melt. <laughs> just like putty. Just like, just, just his, his, his demeanor is no longer, you know, widespread and taking up all this space. He's kind of shrinking into himself as he is very intimidated by the aura that you are emitting currently, Azram. And he says, ah, you know, why, why don't we, uh, uh, you know, we, we can discuss things for sure. Why, why, if you want to sit in on the meeting, sure. Really? It would... That's so nice. Treat me so nicely, champ. I hate this. <laughs> you, you could just call me Geronimo. Actually, you don't have to do the champ thing. It makes it it, it makes me feel strange. Strange. Okay. He starts stands up and he says, I'm going to go cool off. But uh, everyone here, whatever Mr. Johnson asks for, you you give him. All right? Him and his friend. You, I don't care, actually. And he says, I'm going to go fluff my hair. Because he says he goes and he's kind of like, he's like so visibly sweating. <laughs> so he's kind of like stretching, doing like calisthenics as he's walking out. And you see him kind of open the door where it just shuts behind him and everyone is just left in like a stunned silence looking at you do you guys keep tofu here I could really use some breakfast <laughs> and that's where we'll take a break <laughs> <laughs> that was like the Hello, this is Christian, the Dungeon Master for the Strings of Fate. Thank you for listening to episode 42, the second episode of this week. I really hope you're enjoying it, because there is a lot of interesting content going on here. First of all, I just wanted to start off by shouting out the two systems that I borrowed to create the systems I'm using in this episode. One, the Dread RPG Jenga Tower system by The Impossible Dream, and two flashbacks by John Harper uh, in his book uh, Blades in the Dark, a fantastic tabletop RPG for if you are very, very interested in Victorian heists uh, filled with a lot of amazing world building and ghosts. I'm not sponsored to say any of that. I really just love Blades in the Dark. Wish I could play it on the show. So uh, pray that that could happen someday. Anyways. Though we are not sponsored by those two RPGs, we are sponsored by Dungeon Depths. Dungeon Depths is a store for quality gaming supplies with character. And my computer agreed with that statement because its fan kicked into overdrive when I started saying it. Right now, you can go to Dungeon Depths and purchase amazing D&D merchandise as well as soft pod merchandise. We're talking dice, dice trays, dice vaults, stickers, apparel, it's all there, it's all wonderful, and it's all 10% off with the code SOFTPOD at checkout. That's S-O-F-P-O-D. If you didn't hear from last episode's break, Dungeon Depths is actually doing a dice restock on Saturday the 22nd, which means that they will have a lot of their amazing dice as well as commission slots open for their amazing dice. That update is going to go live at 2 p.m. However... If you are a SoftPod patron to our Patreon, you will receive a special code that will allow you to access it 30 minutes earlier than everybody else. That means you are first in line to check out the dice, maybe get a commission. Olivia makes amazing custom dice. They are really beautiful. Uh, and so 
it is a huge thing to get in a little early to peruse their wares. So you can go check them out at shopdungeondepths.com. I feel like I don't say the URL enough, but it's also in the description below. Thank you, Dungeon Depths. Speaking of Patreon, we are sponsored by you, the viewer, on Patreon. Thank you to everyone who subscribes to our Patreon. It really helps into allowing us to branch out and make the show better and better. It allows us to take on amazing people like Carissa to help us with social media. Right now, we've got the Renair Soft Talk up on Patreon. So if you become an honorary bard patron, you can go check that out. And if you're an honorary bard patron, you also get a shout out in the break like I'm about to do right now. Thank you to Essek, Carrie, Patty, Annie, Eli, Allie, Kayla, Orpheus, and Pepper. Thank you so much for supporting us on Patreon. We are also sponsored by Roll20. You can find them at Roll20.net. Roll20 is a virtual tabletop that you can use to run games online for your friends, no matter where in the world you are. It's where I started my D&D journey so, so long ago. So go check them out at Roll20.net. If you don't already know, we have a community Discord server, the Softcore, that is currently watching this live as it airs. We do live watches every Friday at 5 p.m. EST, or sometimes we have two episodes twice a week, one on Wednesday and one on Friday. But we also do other cool, cool things. We have RP events. Sometimes we do movie nights. We're really trying to get more and more engaged with the Softcore because we love interacting with the Softcore. It's just that sometimes silly things like jobs get in the way. Thank you to the mods of the soft cord, by the way, for really, despite having busy schedules coming in and reining everything in and making sure that the community is nice and great. So thank you, mods. Before I go, I just want to leave a little comment prompt. My comment prompt for today is describe what your Salankari would look like if you could design one. I really love the idea of Salankari being designed, and I really want to do something someday of like a, a blank Salankari that the community draws on, that sort of thing, which I'll figure out how to do at some point. Um, but honestly, I'd just love to hear the descriptions of it and what you would do with it. Would you be like a, a milk delivery person or a race driver? Nope, snag rider. <laughs> That's the terminology I put into my own show. Just tell me more a little bit about your Salankari, your OC's Salankari, or your own. That could also be cool. Anyways, that's enough out of me. Bye. Zooming back into the back room here of this bar, which I don't think we ever got the name to, but it's called the Snail's Trough. Um, we find ourselves seated there as... The cronies of Geronimo Johnson are making their way around, still keeping an eye on Azrim and Dresden, who are sat next to each other at the table there. Geronimo Johnson has yet to return. Geronimo Johnson has not returned since this talk. Um, and Dresden kind of sits back and is like, interesting tactics. You should try him sometime. I don't think I have the confidence to. Oh, but you honestly. have the looks to. Uh, true, but still, I'm not entirely sure how you could do it with a straight face. Honestly, Dresden, I don't know how I did it either. That was probably one of the worst things I've ever had to do in my life. It's just, it's, 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 it's a tactic I haven't used in a while. I used to have to use it a lot, and on much uglier and less powerful people, definitely. But I haven't had a resort to that in so long. I feel so grimy. No, oh, I mean, I, I feel like... So, I'm sorry. You know, hopefully you know, nothing comes of it. It didn't seem like he was expecting it either. So uh, hopefully we can keep the rest of the talks very benign, you know? Nothing too intense. Um, <clears throat> the door from behind, uh, you there's just like <laughs> kicked in. You see, Geronimo Johnson, devoid of sweat. His jumpsuit says... I've sufficiently cooled off. <laughs> and I've given some thought to what you were saying. And Mr. Johnson, as he kind of passes by you at the table, making his way to his throne at the head of the table, he says, I'm very flattered by everything you got going on. I shouldn't inform you, though, is that I've got 
I've got someone I'm sweet on currently, so I can't accept any propositions, but I like your gall. You wanted to know about moonstones, moon shards, stuff like that. You wanted to be in on the meeting. I mean, I am very interested in it, and if you think that that's the best place... I can tell you a little bit more information if you'd like. You've... You've charmed me, in a way. Though I must politely decline your advances. And I'm really heartbroken because of that. I know. Must be. But it is the uh, champion's way to let down the heartbroken fans. As long as you keep it a secret that I am uh, currently in a serious relationship. Of course. uh, Who's the lucky person? They will remain unnamed, but you can be assured that they are gorgeous in both uh, body and mind. They really enchant me in the way that we talk and the depth of our conversations. As Dresden's kind of like, okay. <laughs> I I understand that actually because I've I've been involved with snag racers before. Is that right? Yes. You like to live fast and dangerous then. On the slimy trail. What the fuck am I saying? (laughs) (laughs) I'm sick at this character. It wasn't supposed to say it. It's supposed to be like this. You like to live fast and dangerous then. Just keep it in. (laughs) I'm in tears, audience. I'm crying. I love the fast lane of life. I love feeling the thrill. This is like a read of river. This is like a Riverdale table read. <laughs> <laughs> Tristan kind of I just says, e- "Yeah." Um, so the moonstones. Um, ah, yeah. Sorry, I get carried away when I talk about them. They light up my life. Anyways. <laughs> Moonstones, they've been very popular in the Witchwood market over the, let's see, past, uh, market's really grown in the past year or so. No one knows how the supplier is getting them, but only one person can do it. Many have tried to kind of replicate that set, that amount of supply with a lot of fakes and a lot of, you know, attempts at raiding the Temple of the Fractured Mother, but... That just doesn't work out a lot for many people. And so we have to go through one supplier, and that supplier acts directly through the ferryman. The ferryman? Yeah, he runs the whole shebang around here. Crazy, where, can I meet him? No, no one meets him in person. Well, at least I never have, but people meet with associates of the ferryman and he speaks through them. And then they make their deals that way, but Fairman's very paranoid, we can say. And you've, you've never met him? I've met with associates to purchase a share of moon dust, but to be honest, the price can be a bit steep, probably because the supply is so unstable. Speaking of unstable... This entire time, audience, I've continued playing Jenga. I know. It's kind of crazy to see. There's like 17 blocks. Yeah, I have 17 blocks over here. This person's fucking down on one knee. (laughs) (laughs) It's a tough, uh, it's a tough market for, but honestly, they must make a killing off of me. And a single ounce of moon dust would run you, what, nearly 100 gold. And how much do you think that we would need for the healing properties of it? For the healing properties, you're better off with a shard. I mean, this is basically a piece of the moon directly from the Fractured Mother. <clears throat> they say that it's got healing properties that are out of this world. <laughs> He's kind of laughing to himself. And everyone around is like, Ha ha ha. was like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. That was a funny one. Yeah, that was pretty funny. It was really good. But yeah, a shard of the moon is enough to really heal you very, very well. Though, depends on what you're trying to get healed, I suppose. I've seen people, you know, 
deathly ill, brought back from the brink. Or, you know, suffering from some gnarly crashes on the snag racing course, just to be brought back with a, you know, a single shard of moon. And a, a shard is less than an, more than an ounce? A shard is much more than an ounce. The dust is uh, what people usually get. It helps to, you know, gives you a euphoric feeling. Ever since the supply of Crimson Lily died down from out of Weldon, then uh, people have been extra looking for a fix to give them the same feeling. And moon dust, really, really, it's that spot. Not only does pieces of the fractured mother provide a healing property it also provides a euphoric property something that really kicks up any drink or drug that you can find here at the witchwood market and how many times have you partaken ah only a couple it really is a lot to afford even on a champion like me's income but i like to reserve moon dust for when i think i'm gonna win big and to be honest, a big win is in the future for me. Oh, really? Yeah, we got a cup coming up. A big race. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's it's called the it's called the Lightning Cup, named after one of the former champions of snag racing. But in all honesty, uh, I think they're gonna have to rename it soon. Once I take the big prize. What what champion? Charlie kind of stops. It's like, you don't, you don't. And then Dresden kind of slaps him like on the leg or something. And he's like, oh, oh. <laughs> um, is it a lightning star song? Of course. He says as he kind of stands up, only the most legendary snag racer ever grace us with his lightning fast drifts and moves. Have you ever met him? No. Well, I wish I could. He was an idol of mine. I tried to meet him a lot when I was a kid, but he never had time for me. After he quit the scene, that is. He was a big-time adventurer or whatever, but, you know. Do you still, like, look up to him a lot? I hate his guts, but I love him, you know. He never made time for me when I was a kid, but, you know, one day I'd like to rub it in his face that I'm the champion and everything along those lines. <laughs> It's kind of like I'm looking for his approval, but I don't want it at the same time. It's all very confusing in my head and something that I've talked to a therapist a lot quite a bit. <laughs> well, to be honest, he's kind of like a father to me, but not really. <laughs> not biologically so, but, you know, I kind of liked him more than my real dad. That That's crazy, dude. Um, And what if what if I told you that I could... I could maybe set that up. <laughs> like literally like slams the tanker on there. It's like it's tears already in his eyes. Like he like already flowing down his face. He says, Don't lie to me now. Don't play with my feelings. I just told you how I feel about this man. And if I could meet him, I I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I would be an emotional wreck. And I don't know. I, my my feelings are so crossed about it. But I would really like to. So don't mess with me right now. I'm not. I, I take his hands in mine. You walk up and take his hands. He says, what's going on? Geronimo, I would never mess with your emotions like that. I feel like a yo-yo, an emotional yo-yo right now. I've been thrown up to the highest highs and the lowest lows. So I don't really know how to feel. <laughs> I know him. I know Lightning Star Song. You're jo you're joking me. You're mm. joking me once again. Another pull of the yo-yo. Absolutely not joking you. I am well acquainted with him. Oh. And if I'm happy with how our time together goes, then maybe you can meet him. immediate like heaving like held back sobs it's been so long but I'm very important to him so make sure that I stay out of trouble and stay out of danger as long as I live go by the name Geronimo Johnson which I plan to stick with a long time because it's a cool fucking name 
really cool. I'm gonna protect you. Protect you with my life. If you're important to Lightning Star Song, you're important to me. That's a... a that... that the camera like cuts over to Dresden who is just like wide eyed no absolutely zero at least like I don't know what the fuck's going on anymore I've lost I've lost the plot <laughs> I've lost the plot Azrum squeezes his hands and says that's my champ <sighs> champ you think you can get him they call me champ I you know I'm not, I'm not gonna lie I don't think I can get him to do that Okay. But I can certainly ask. What about Sun? Just a little bit. Sun? Just is like a fun, cool way, like friends do. You know, if you call your friends Sun, does that happen for you? Uh, that... Okay, well. So... I'm pretty young, so I've, I've never really envisioned like. Your friends don't call you Sun? Mm. No one's called me Sun, but I would, but maybe, but maybe it would. It would sort a lot of things out for me if he, anyways. Uh, I, I'll, I'll <laughs> ask. I'll ask. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's great. That's perfect for me. Ooh, I'm super not. I'm not nervous about this at all. In fact, I'm really, really excited. I just feel like I'm gonna be sick, but in like a cool way. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, I'm glad to appease some childhood dreams of yours. If you could just help me with mine yes okay so you want to be in on the talks all right cool i'm meeting with this person they say that they can get direct access to the moon to the moonstones that's fine that's perfect you can be in there too and maybe i could you know see if we could slide you a couple shards or something along those lines if the prices are really as cheap as this person's saying they are <sighs> that sounds lovely geronimo for now, I, I want to know more. I mean, uh, let's, uh, why don't we sit down, have drinks, we'll wait. At this point, they should be arriving any minute. Okay. So, um, you have access to get whatever you want from the bar or whatever along those lines, along with Dresden, who pulls you aside at some point and sits you down and says, okay, we've gotten pretty far with all of this are you really going to introduce him to deville i mean <clears throat> i think it would be kind of funny so maybe <laughs> <laughs> I, this i i can't tell if this person's gonna if this person's gonna like love deville when he sees him or kill him on sight the like, thing I, is, is that he can't kill him so that's why it's gonna be funny are you sure because i don't i don't know how this person feels it seems like he both loves and hates him at the same time and it's a weird father thing going on between yeah him. i mean i'll just tell deville like if he comes at you like just call him son and then like i'm sure that'll shock him at least a little bit just for... call him what a, what and i what <laughs> Okay. Do you think that would make Deville uncomfortable? I, I still haven't even told Deville that I know he doesn't even know I'm here right now. He thinks I'm asleep in bed. How many people have you called son in your life? None. It's, I have not called a single person my son. You call, it's very Wait, uncomfortable. Dresden. My son. How did that feel? Oh, oh, oh God. <laughs> he says as he kind of like shakes himself out and he's like, ah, I felt an eldritch blast now about to fire off into this room. Try it on me. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> oh, God. Here? This episode is crazy. What's going on? This episode is crazy. This is so uncomfortable. Persuasion, you said? Persuasion. 18. Listen, son. <laughs> that is weird. That's oh, weird. That's weird, dude. He just starts <laughs> slamming his head on the table, and John was like, "Whoa, let's all be cool here. What's going Azurum's on?" Azurum's like trying to like boil his ears out. <laughs> Everyone's it's like, "Gosh," she says. Oh, so this negotiation we won, but I feel like we lost. Oh my god. It's okay. We're closer now. Okay. Well. All we gotta do. We call that bestie bonding. This is bestie bonding. <laughs> oh my god! Bestie bonding is going through things that are that traumatic. You, apparently, that you've you wouldn't experience with anyone else but your besties. And now we'll always have this bond, Dresden. This this the son 
You know what? Actually, I need a drink. I need a drink. I need a drink. Someone dressed and it's like eight in the morning. I need a drink. <laughs> I, someone, please get me a drink. As you see the doors open, it says, "Ah, right on time." Hey, uh, fellas, why don't you come take a seat over here? Why don't we get this negotiation started underway? As you two turn, you see a human woman enter flanked by two other individuals one of them a green tiefling horns that curl back that you are very familiar with who looks in a bit of a daze at this current moment and the other one a sun elf who enters, and as he does, Geronimo Johnson stops mid-sentence. There is a tankard in his hand that just falls and (laughs) shatters to the ground. There are some pitched breaths as he says, Dad? In which DeVille replies, What? <laughs> and that's her one. Oh, that was the worst episode of my that life. That was the worst. It was such a wild episode.